Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Gulecha and I welcome you. In this video, I am discussing my learnings from Middle Discourses 69. The title of the discourse is with Gulisani. The link to the entire discourse is given in the description and you can read it and get your own insights. In this discourse, basically there was a wilderness monk named Gulisani. He, he had lax behavior and he joined to the Sangha. Then Venerable Sariputta spoke to the mendicants that a wilderness monk who comes to stay in the Sangha should have some essential qualities. Now, what are the essential qualities? Uh, uh, like, the, for example, he said that a wilderness monk who comes to stay in the Sangha should have respect and reverence for his spiritual companions. If he doesn't, there will be who say, there will be some people who will say, what's the point of this wilderness Wilderness venerable staying alone and autonomous in the wilderness since he has no respect and reverence for his spiritual companions. That's why a wilderness monk should, who has come to stay in the Sangha should have respect and reverence. Then, uh, then uh, he says that a wilderness monk uh, should uh, not intrude on the senior monks and he should not block the junior monks from his seat. Then, so there is this list of what are the qualities of the wilderness monk that should be there that he should know even the supplementary regulations. That means in the Vinaya there are the supplementary regulations. He should be even knowing those supplementary regulations. Then he should not enter the village too early or return too late of the day. To the, of the day. That means he should not go too early and not return late. There are especially dangers that Buddha said of uh, begging at night. The person can fall in a, a sewer or people can mistake him to be a goblin or lot of those things are there. So Buddha always advised a particular time limit where, wherein they should go for begging. Then a wellness monk who has come to stay in the Sangha shouldn't sh socialize with families before or after the meal. Right? Then he shouldn't be restless or fickle. Then he, sh he should not be scrilious or loose-tongued. Right? Then he should be easy to admonish. Easy to admonish means that if person, someone, he is making a mistake and someone gives him the instruction, he should be able to accept the mistake and uh, and accept the fact that he, will, he has made a mistake and he will correct himself and not kind of be defensive and all. And he should be easy to ad admonish with good friends. He should guard the sense doors. That means the five senses, he should be able to guard the sense doors, be mindful. Right? He should eat in moderation. So Buddha always advised eating in moderation for good health of the bhikkhus. And Buddha also advised in the Vinaya, it was later on laid down as a rule, not to eat at a wrong time and not to eat at the night time. So he should think over these things and eat in moderation. Then a wilderness monk should be committed to wakefulness. That means committed to awareness. He should be energetic. That means he should rouse energy to follow the Buddha's path. He should be mindful. Right? Then he should have immersion. That means he should be concentrated. He should concentrate his mind develop his meditative capacity, concentration capacity. He should be wise. He should make an effort to learn the teaching and training. right? Because if someone asks him about Buddha's teaching, he should not get stumped. right? Then he should practice meditation to realize the peaceful liberations that are formless, transcending form. Then uh, if someone asks him a question about formless liberations, then he, if he doesn't know, then he will be stumped. He should practice meditation to realize the superhuman state. Then finally, Venerable, when Sariputta said this, Mahamoglana asked, said to him, Reverend Sariputta, should these things be undertaken and followed only by wilderness monks or by those who live within a village as well? That means even a lay people. So the, the, this is the basic twist here in this discourse is that otherwise you would be expecting that Sariputta would say that this is only for the wilderness monks, monks, because most of the things are there which are related to monks, right? But Sariputta said, Reverend Mughlana, these things should be undertaken and followed by wilderness monks and still more by those who live within a village. The, the sense here is that people who live in the village have far greater temptations and they should be even more inclined to follow these rules. And that is why it is said that though as per what we are like uh, lay people, we are like at a minimum we have to follow the five precepts which is no killing, no stealing, no lying, no sexual misconduct and no uh, drinking. But apart from that, we should also try and study the bhikkhus precepts also, the precepts that bhikkhus, bhikkhus need to follow. Because if we study that, we can bring some 
uh, you know of those precepts in our daily life to the extent we can follow that not 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 that we can follow it 100% but even if we ten, follow 10% it will be for our well being right so there is a book bhikkhu's uh, guide for lay people bhikkhu's rules guide for lay people uh, you can check it you can check it in the google bhikkhu's guide for lay people uh, and you can get uh, it's a pdf ebook that is available so i have not been able to study it right till now but i will definitely do that right and i will bring out the main points in any of the videos right so this is the basically the the thing uh, this particular sutta uh, do read the sutta and if whatever insight you have got from the sutta please do share in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaye namo buddhaye